like I'll give you a, a, an example right now in Shanghai, the, the city's ports are closed all like entrance into the city because of a few COVID cases. Mm. Strategically, if you look at that and yeah, maybe there are some COVID cases and they're very strict on COVID because that's where it came from, you know, in the Wuhan area. Literally. If you look at it strategically though, Shanghai exports the top five exporters that rely on Shanghai goods, USA, oh. Japan, Taiwan, Germany, and uh, I can't think of the other one, but... And f- is it safe to say that the, f- that the base foundation and the reason why you're making that bet on crypto is because of the actual technology supporting it, because of what, pl- because of what blockchain technology is? There is a few reasons. I want to say first, the first reason was how can I make more money? Right. And it was very simple. It was like, hey, can I make my cash work for me? How do I learn this? I need to learn stocks. I need to learn this crypto. Because I actually made my first investment in 2017, but it was when Bitcoin was 16000 I put $100 in there and I lost 20 bucks because it went down. And you're immediately and like- I, I, I was like, I was 22 years old, I think, and I didn't really understand what I was doing. Right. But I did see XRP at two cents. And right. that, that still is in my head like, wow, I wish I knew what I was Dude, doing. That's what I, that's how I look at gaming crypto though. Because gaming, you're talking about how early like crypto is relative to the entire global economy. Gaming crypto is that with respect to crypto itself. Yeah. And to be able to understand at least how crypto even works like you do, it makes it a little easier to realize that there's another boat you can jump on before it's too late. Yeah. But at that point, again, it's the same thing. It's okay. Well, at that point, if I'm in gaming crypto, what's going to be the best gaming crypto, right? Yeah. And you can always, you can always, or how should I say this? There's always something to invest in. And it's really what you value to invest in and grow. If you have that extra money to invest in it, no matter how much it is, if you can start in investing it'd be good to do so, right. you know, and teach yourself over time. And yeah, I'll probably miss certain opportunities along You'll the way. you always miss opportunities. But there's still that fact that you're learning along the way right. and that you're still, you know, wanting to invest in this space. So it's, 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 it's going to grow overall in general. So right. that's why I'm saying, even if it's GameFi, it can be insurance related. It can be real estate related. Right. It can be NFTs. It can be metaverse. It can be, um, the payments and financial institutions, there's going to be so much going, it's going to be the whole, the whole world will work on, you know, digital currency. Right. So it's already working on digital currency. For yeah. The most I part. mean, yeah, I think I read somewhere, uh, the United Kingdom did like a survey, the bank of England, I think 18 or 17% of people in the UK use cash last year or in 2020. Wow. I don't know. I remember what year you have to look it's that up, digital. but it's, not many people are even using cash anymore. Right. So it's already digital and it's already your credit and debit cards. And those MasterCard and Visa companies, they're already integrating. Of course. With these coins, some of these coins that I'm right. talking about, like XRP and XLM and and uh, Wads Pay. Like there's multiple different companies out there and sectors of the world utilizing different asset you know, security coins or currency coins or stable coins right. for their country or for their central bank and they're partnering up. So it's just a matter of kind of following patterns. So I swear. And that's the name of the game, bro. Because when the internet boom was happening and you had all these old, how about this? When the gold rush was happening in America in the 1800s, there was a lot of people who were just saying, Hey, go, go West and find gold. And there was a lot of people who were sitting there being told that information, like, Fuck that. Like, what's that? What? Really? There's gold? How much gold is there? Yeah. But those who decided to jump into the water and actually see if they could swim, they were the Get ones. Get those tools. Dig that gold. Dig that gold. And what ended risk up happening? that, you know, adventure. Because that's what it's about. It's about the risk, man. Everything in life is in everything in life is risk. Yeah. But my boy Justin talked about it on our Bitcoin crypto uh, little conversation is at what point, what, what's your risk tolerance? Like how much are you willing to tolerate? That's the that depends on 
you know, maybe how old you are. You could be in your 50s or 60s and closer to the end of the road and you don't have much time to invest in and wait for that investment to grow. Yeah, make a Roth IRA when you're 55. Yeah, there, there, there's no point there. So like, or you can be young like us and, you know, you have that time to grow and invest. It's really a much about how old you are, how much you're willing to risk at that point and wait at that point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe your income or you can't uh, invest too much because you have a family or you have other obligations. And you don't have any residual income to actually invest that money. Yeah. You want to be able to, what you invest in, be not even worried about losing it in case it does, you Literally. do lose it and you make an accident. And I've made multiple uh, learning mistakes, I guess, through calling puts and, uh, and calls. And I've lost, you know, a couple hundred dollars, you know, maybe I think the most I've lost was like 800 bucks and it was all profit. And I was like, well, there goes. I'm playing with house money. Yeah. It's like, well, darn, I guess let's try again sometime in the right. future when I grow it back up. It's, it's, I, I don't think, uh, a lot of people even <laughs> consider Whenever they are investing their money, dude, people are taking out loans and shit for crypto. I don't leverage, and I respect right. people that know how to do that and sure. and can safely, you know, call the volatility of Ethereum or Bitcoin. But I I don't touch leverage because right. just because I know I I will make a mistake, and I'm not good enough to call those technical charts or. But even then, the people calling the technical charts, bro, it's like there's not an ardent science to how stocks even operate. Mm -hmm. It's all. Bro, it, it has a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And there are behavioral mechanisms and variables that do um, affect and do manipulate the market. But for the most part, there is no timing the market. There is no really being able to call whenever something is going to make you money or not. It's all risk. Yeah, it really all is risk research you you dig research deep enough. mitigates the risk yeah and that's what it's about it makes mitigating. a more educated risk which will then depending on your risk tolerance will open up doors for you to be able to get in on get in on stuff early especially full circle if you're surrounding yourself with people who can help introduce you and walk you into the game yes i agree and though you don't need it you got the internet but anyway yeah no it, it really is up to your sheer will willpower and desire to teach yourself and to you know learn as much as you can and from others and right. listen to that wisdom, even if, if you have those mentors or role models and uh, try to share that along your close circle and grow with your circle or independently, if you want it, it it's really up to you. And, um, the risk it, I, I personally, I, st like I said, I started with 50 bucks in Robinhood. Right. That's how much I was willing to risk. Right. And it ended up, you know, going to a hundred. And then I, I was day trading and I was making sure I wasn't going to get flagged. And, you know, you got to make those uh, right decisions and Gotta take those precautionary measures. Yeah. And obviously if I had a lot more money to invest in, probably I would be in a way different situation right of now course. because I know certain, um, the certain, uh, decisions I would have made with that extra cash would have probably already grown exponentially. Um, it's just a matter of acquiring that capital on my own and slowly building it and then risking it and then playing with house and then money. playing with house money. Yeah. I don't want to rely on leverages. I don't want to rely on loans. No, thank you. So yeah, pretty much. So everything that I do financially right now is to prepare for what's coming. That is as simple as I could get with all my investments, every decision that I made, because I know that the future is not very, I mean, I'm very optimistic usually for technology, uh, uh, you know, exponential growth of, you know, AI, drones, uh, biogenetics. I know the future has a lot of potential in tech, but before that potential is really achieved, I feel like there is going to be a disruptive change in the, uh, honestly, in the, in the new world order of things of where uh, the economies are going. And and China and Russia are, are tag teaming. They are they are tag teaming right now so hard that people are overlooking certain things. Like I'll give you a, a, an example. Right now in Shanghai, the the city's ports are closed, all like entrance into the city because of a few COVID cases. Mm. Strategically, if you look at that, and yeah, maybe there are some COVID cases, and they're very strict on COVID because that's where it came from. You know, in the Wuhan area. Literally. If you look at it strategically, though, Shanghai exports the top five exporters that rely on Shanghai goods, USA, oh. Japan, Taiwan, Germany, and uh, I can't think of the other one, but 
as soon as you said Taiwan, it's like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, so there is some geopolitical. Yeah. There's shit. there's a geopolitical context in that shutdown of those port of, of that Shanghai port, mm-hmm. which three hundred like container ships can't uh, reload, unload, and the average is usually like if you look throughout like the past few years of this chart, I just actually shared it on my in- Instagram, um, is. 160 maybe 150 waiting to like unload so already there's 300 plus waiting so the supply chains are affected oh yeah is that a strategy or is that like is that a way of hitting us back economically right yeah if you think about it because that's what they know the consequences of shutting down shanghai right but no one looks at it like that they read the headline they're like oh shanghai's closed due to covid cases no there's there's a reason it's closed because i don't think they want to close their second largest uh, city in the country. Why do you think richest? Literally, at that point, it's the fucking media, though, bro. Like at that point, it's the media not letting us know like what's really going on. There's our news. No. Is it news? It's not news. It's fear. It's propaganda. It's fear, and it's 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 also kind of for you to cl- uh, to tune in to the what's currently going on, maybe. But it it they get their um what is that word uh people interested in because of the 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 fear in what they're providing the content is based off it's not love really fear there's really brain. not much good news that they're sharing yet yeah, and they should share good news too a lot of news networks don't do that but most of the news networks are just trying to get you to, to either hate a certain side or agree with a certain side and it's very bipolar here which i am i don't like but you know that's how it's always kind of been but that's what sells like we said just yeah. like war just like yeah. every the propaganda of American media, what it does is it causes people to suffer thinking the world is actually on fire. It causes real mental like uh, I feel like uh, um, hysteria or hysteria. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I know people close to me that are like that don't really understand kind of what's going on and kind of reach out to me. They're like, hey, what's actually going on? Because right. they know that. I kind of take the time of my day to go and dig deep a little bit. But who has the time? That's the yeah. problem, Eddie. It, it's hard time, to find the time. Like, yeah. But I, if, if you're a truth seeker, you will find the time. You'll have time. Yeah. Oh, because, because at that point, your, your truth is like, because your time is so valuable, you only want your, your experiences. Words, you, you want your words to come out to be truthful. To be grounded in truth. Grounded in truth and honest and with respect And, you know, it took a while for me to kind of understand all that because, yeah, in my youthful years and uh, while I was getting my bachelor's, I was a pretty irresponsible young individual, didn't make the right decisions. So in a sense, it took lots of mistakes and self-awareness and self-understanding and maybe a few other things. Self-acceptance. Yeah. And accepting who I am and my shadow self, in a Mm -hmm. sense, and what I'm capable of. Oh, you're going in on some Jungian (laughs) ideas. And it took a while and I'm glad that at the age of 22, 23 that, you know, I made that 180. Right. You know, and now I'm here. This is the current me that you see. 